Did Jesus have two fathers? Turn in your Bible, your King James Bible, to Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. The Trinitarians make a real big deal about uh, God the Father and Jesus the Son of God. And they say they're not the same, they're not the same, they're not the same, and everything. And, and Jesus said that the Father, you know, that's His Father, and He's the Son of God, and, and everything. But I want to show you something kind of an interesting little problem here for the Trinitarians. Not a problem for those of us that believe the biblical Godhead, that all three are in one being. Uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of God the Father. Uh, no, it says the Holy Ghost. Come back to that here in just a minute. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Hmm. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God with us. Jesus Christ is God. You can also compare that to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, where Jesus is called the everlasting Father. But uh, verse 24, Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him uh, his wife, and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Okay, um, according to this passage, God the Father is not the father of Jesus. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now, I can look at that thing, and I can say, well, it's no problem at all, because the Godhead is Jesus as the body, the Father as the soul, and the Holy Spirit as, obviously, the Spirit. No big deal. So, God the Father can be involved, and the Holy Spirit can be involved. But what if you believe in the Trinity? You have three separate persons, each with their own body, soul, and spirit. What are you going to do with that? I mean, were there two beings, two persons involved in Jesus Christ being born? Well, if you're a Trinitarian, you'd have to answer yes to that. God the Father is involved and the Holy Ghost is involved. It says here right here, she's found of child with the Holy Ghost. Hmm. Go to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Verse 26 through 35. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Kind of funny, because if you believe in the Catholic Mary, she supposedly is immaculately, immaculately conceived, um, which means she had no original sin on her. And why would she be kind of shocked? Well, what are you calling me highly favored of God? Well, she should have known that. I mean, she's Holy Mary, the mother of God, after all. The Mary of the Bible bears no resemblance at all, other than namesake-wise, with the Roman Catholic Mary. A little extra there for you. Um, verse 30, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and, shalt, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. Um, he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Son of the highest, who would that be? Who's the highest? Well, that'd be the Father, right? I don't think anybody would disagree with me on that one. Verse 33, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Verse 35, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Hmm. Now if you believe the Trinity, what do you do with that? You have two involved there. 
You can't switch your little thing and say, well, uh, actually, okay, uh, Jesus was conceived of the Holy Ghost. All right, that was there. He's conceived of the Holy Ghost, and uh, the Father is somehow positionally the Father, but he's not really the Father. Um, you, can't, you can't duck it. Because right here, this passage says they're both involved. The highest. Obviously, that's God the Father. The highest is involved, and the Holy Ghost is involved. Again, for me, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. I believe the Godhead. Godhead is, these three are one. Body, soul, spirit. One being. Not a problem, you see. And so I can look at that and I can say the Holy Ghost and the Father, the highest there, they're involved. They're one being, you see. And they use Mary. And you know, how did that whole thing work? I have no idea. It's a mystery of godliness. I have no idea. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. It's a mystery to us. We don't understand. But Jesus had to take on a mortal body. Well, you can't just, you know, God could have just created him or whatever else, but that's not what the prophecy was. The prophecy was that a virgin would conceive. She was found of, of child of the with child of the Holy Ghost. All right? That's a miracle that happened there. All right? So Jesus Christ takes on the form of a, a, a baby there in the womb. She's with child. He's there in the womb, I believe, all nine months and everything, you know, and, and goes the whole way through, and she delivers him, and he comes out, and now here he is, God manifest in the flesh. And his soul was the Father, and his spirit is the Holy Ghost. Right there, the Godhead, as a baby, sent to die on the cross to pay for sins, what a miracle. What an amazing miracle. Um, but what do you do if you believe in the Trinity? Hmm. Because there you would have to have two fathers, the Holy Ghost and the highest. Two fathers. Unless you want to just try to, you know, just do like a, a typical Trinitarian would and just go over to philosophy and say, well, actually the highest could actually be a... Re uh, um, a reference to the Holy Ghost and the, uh, whatever, okay? But then you still have the problem of why are you calling God the Father the Father? It would be the Holy Ghost would be the Father if he's a separate individual person from the Father and from Jesus Christ. You know, you might want to give up on this whole Trinity thing. It's just stupid. And false. I mean, the more you study the thing, the more you look into it, the more arguments are coming up in the body of Christ and things as far as arguments against this Trinity thing. Uh, you just need to dump it. It is a false pagan teaching. And the reality of it is, why is it so important in these last days? Well, because there will be a Trinity, a physical Trinity on the earth in the form of the dragon, Satan, in other words, in the book of Revelation. You can read about it, chapter 16. The false prophet and the beast. Three, there. There will be a physical trinity in the future. And you look back through it at uh, ancient pagan traditions and teachings and things, you had uh, probably the oldest one would be Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz. And then you have Isis, um, Osiris, and Set in Egypt. Three separate persons, all claiming the title of God. It's an ancient pagan myth, this thing of this Trinity thing. And again, this three different gods, but they're just one God thing was there before the Lord even showed up on this earth as far as in the form of Jesus Christ. It was there in the past. So certainly the, the Trinity concept was there. You know, again, it's a satanic counterfeit because Satan can't counterfeit the thing, the, the, you know, the actual Godhead. He can't counterfeit that. Um, so he tries to come up with his own version and he comes up with the Trinity. And it's all in preparation to prepare people one day to eventually accept the Antichrist as God. He sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. All right? And how are you going to do that unless you can manifest three separate persons that all claim to be one God? That's why it's so important. That's why you read in the Catholic Catechism that I've showed in many, many studies... You read in here, and they're saying it is the foundation for the Christian faith. The Trinity, 
Doctrine is the foundation for the Christian faith. That's why it's so important. All right? I, I mean, if you want to stick with this three persons thing and whatever else, like I've said, at least drop the name Trinity. It's not in here. Tertullian, the church father, created the thing. You know, long after the Bible was finished. Um, I don't think the Lord wants us to add things to scriptures, especially titles for who he is, when it's based on a false pagan concept. So, um, if you're being led of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to abandon this Trinity concept. Uh, I, I used to say Trinity. I never believed this three separate persons thing and whatever else. I never believed that. But I fell prey to using these, you know, the Trinity and whatever other thing, three persons and things. I, I, I fell for using that terminology and I repented of that. And I said, I'm sorry, Lord, I, I shouldn't have been saying that stuff. And the more you study the Bible, I'll tell you what, um, when we come out with some more videos here on this whole issue, um, there's just no excuse for standing by the Catholic Trinity anymore, unless you're a Catholic. Unless you're looking forward to seeing the Antichrist and the false prophet and the dragon. Okay? So that is going to be it. Thank you for watching.